Smartphones are not just phones. They are small computers. You can use them to access the internet, send mails or download various apps, which is good, in theory. The downside, you're at greater risk of downloading a virus or of saving unwanted data. The phone's operating system is the culprit. We take a look at Google's Android software, point out its shortcomings and what to do about them. Sejin Kapkun is an expert on computer security at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, ETH. He's a smartphone user like many others. He makes videos and takes photos, browses through various news sites and writes emails. And like every smartphone user, from time to time he deletes data of websites he has visited or photos he isn't happy with. But is the deleted data really gone? After looking at this problem, we, we realized that uh, the data is actually not gone from these devices. That when you delete it, it's stored in a sort of temporary buffer and uh, it's only marked for deletion, but it's not actually deleted. Capcoon and his team show how easy it is to retrieve the deleted photos and data. This requires a laptop, a little specialist knowledge and a few minutes work. So as you can see, I mean the pictures of, of, of Zurich that we took and then, and then deleted can be fully retrieved without any loss of quality or it's bit by bit copying of the same information content. A little more difficult but also no problem is reconstructing websites a smartphone user has visited. But what is the reason for this problem in deleting data? The smartphone's memory is comparable to a notepad. Every time that you put a picture on your memory, so this is image one, one page is filled. Then when you store another image, image two, now this second page is filled. So each time that you store a new piece of information, you turn a leaf and more information is being stored on your, on your storage device. Now, when you want to go back and delete some piece of information, you don't actually remove it, you don't rip out the page of your journal. What you do is you simply mark that this image has been deleted. Okay. To get around this, the ETH team has developed an app to really delete unwanted data. The program overwrites the deleted files with zeros and ones. But smartphones with Google's Android operating system also have other security problems. Eric Niklaus of the company Omnisec shows how the GPS in his phone stored the data from his last trip. We activated the GPS. With the activated GPS, data of the GPS positions are saved every minute on Google's server. As a user, I can delete them, but I still don't know what happens to this data. Anonymous trips are no longer possible with this Android smartphone. It's dangerous, being able to monitor someone over the smartphone, knowing where they are every minute. The smartphone experts tackle this and other security gaps. They clear out an ordinary Android phone until it is really secure. We'll take out Geo Satellite and Google Maps. Genau und then Google Maps, das brauchen wir auch nicht, das nehmen wir raus. The browser and Bluetooth have got to go next. When I'm on the train, I can see three to four phones with their Bluetooth switched on. These are programs which can connect to these phones. I could download the contacts and read all the text messages, even the deleted ones. Even the email program and all the other apps are victims of the clear-out. At the end, all you can do is phone. Now the smartphone is made secure against eavesdroppers. A 256-bit encryption is programmed onto this chip card. 
These days you can say 256-bit encryption keys are highly secure. You can't crack them. There is no computer on Earth. Even if you would link up all computers in the world, it wouldn't be enough to break the code of a 256-bit key. This encryption chip is inserted into the phone like a SIM card. Highly secure phones of this type are used by VIPs and secret services. And they're not cheap. Two phones like this plus the necessary infrastructure can easily cost 50,000 francs. The app to permanently delete data from your phone is available free for download. You can find the link on our website www.einstein.sf.tv. Most of us have a mobile phone. Only few have phones which can encrypt conversations. So, in theory, our phones can be tapped. Quite easily. The problem does not lie with the device itself, but with the GSM network. The technology is antiquated, and so anyone who wants to can listen in. Phone hacking. This is how it can look in reality. The Paradeplatz in Zurich. Here at the heart of the financial center, a spy sits in his van and listens in on private, potentially explosive telephone conversations. The listening station is small and mobile. A transmitter which taps into the cellular network. In the past, this was only possible with expensive phone hacking equipment. This has changed. At the University of Applied Sciences for Engineering and Information Technology in Biel, Professor of Mobile Communications Ulrich Fiedler is working on an inexpensive phone hacking device a kind of pirate transmitter able to tap into mobile phone discussions. First we have here an antenna. It can intercept mobile signals. The cable of the antenna gets you into this box. This is where the data is pre-processed, so to speak. It reaches the computer through a USB cable. In the computer we can do everything a GSM base station can do. That's how we build our pirate transmitter. How much does it cost to make? What you see here, including the laptop, costs around 2,000 francs. Fiedler, who also runs a security company, only needed a few weeks to prepare this listening station. What is your aim in doing this experiment? With this experiment, I want to show that anybody can build a pirate station like this, and that our networks are no longer secure. I want to point that out. I think a certain public pressure is needed for the mobile phone providers to invest in closing these security gaps. The listening station makes use of a security loophole in the GSM network. When a mobile phone dials into the GSM network, it has to register at its provider's base station with a corresponding identification number. By contrast, the provider's base station does not need to identify itself towards the mobile phone. So the caller does not know if the provider, Swisscom in this case, really is Swisscom or not. These security gaps provide opportunities for attack by a pirate transmitter, which can pass itself off as the right base station. Fiedler sets up his listening station in the university's canteen. Hacking in public is illegal and a punishable offense, but he has a permit to do so here in the building. And this is how he can conceal his pirate transmitter. If I now write Swisscom, it will go live. When I shut down the computer and restart it, it will appear as a Swisscom base station. Then we can take over mobile phones. Does the phone user not notice this? No, he doesn't see that. As it would be illegal to tap in under Swisscom, the mobile phone expert uses the name Testcom. So we're ready. Two ordinary mobile phones whose numbers Fiedler knows are given to two test persons. One person moves to another room. This is the phone that will be tapped. Hello? Hello, I just wanted to ask if you've already booked our holiday. 
Um, no, not yet. I still need your credit card number. Have you got a pen? No, just text it to me. Ulrich Fiedler used simple symbols to show what the computer was doing while it was tapping the phone. What can this hacking device do? In theory, I could take over all mobile phones around me. If I'm interested in one particular phone, I could filter it out and listen to the conversations carried out on this phone. Here's the proof, the conversation we just listened to. Hello? Hello, I just wanted to ask if you've already booked our holiday. Um, no, not yet. Einstein confronts the Swiss Federal Office of Communications with the worrying security gap in the GSM network. We are closely following this development. Over the past few years, we've had several reports of phone tapping. But we are not aware of any case in which phone hacking actually took place. The reports we receive mainly refer to experiments and not to reality. Just because one doesn't know about it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Take e-banking, for example. When a bank is hacked, you certainly don't learn about it on television. Think of tax data. A CD was sold to Germany. So it's conceivable that equipment is used to record phone conversations which are then passed on. All providers are required by law to inform their customers that telephone calls can be intercepted. They fulfill this obligation in the small print. But the mobile phone experts are firmly convinced that phone tapping into the GSM network will increase. Efforts to combat this are technically possible, but very expensive. That is the main reason that providers are wary of carrying this out. Only users of the UMTS network can be certain their phones are not being tapped. The downside is that it's not available everywhere. And not all phones are UMTS compatible.